Hello, anyone who might have to be watching at this odd hour of night. Um, so I fixed the, as I mentioned in my mainstream, I fixed the thermal bugs. Um, so I'm ready to go back to continuing to design my space shuttle. Um, And the problem, yeah, that burnt off. Yeah, these things burnt off. So I think what I want to do is put this on here. And we're going to put an RDO-105 on. Oh, that looks like it's sitting out in the middle of nowhere. So I guess we'll put a proc tank in there. Not that I particularly want to, but... Let's see, conic. How heavy is that? Seven kilos? Oh, that's fine. Uh, so let's fill up on... Whoop! And this becomes the 109. And 7 minute 24 second burn time is what we're allowed. That's 6 minutes. Now, this needs to move back in. That's about right. I think. Okay. Go with Soviet green. Um, okay, so definitely need to. a bit more propellant and stuff. That's wrong now. Let's say 800 liters of that. Okay, that's almost right. Uh, let's put some batteries in here. Ooh, doggy, that's a lot of batteries.
All right. That's pretty centered. What happened to the landing gear? That's weird. Um, but whatever. Snap everything perfect. Okay. Now, let's lower this down. Yes, thank you, Chad. It is indeed a glorious looking plane. Uh, and in case you're wondering why it's called a Rakata plane, that's, I mean, that's, that is Russian for, that's what what the various early Russian space plane studies were called, because I believe that is Russian for rocket plane, as you might think. Uh, come on. Okay, let's move that down to match. And root thickness needs to move down a little bit. It's about right. Um, That's entirely RCS correctable. Um, the only other thing we need is a way to deorbit, because that thing doesn't relight. Although, technically, we don't have configs for the verniers, so the verniers do relight. So that's fine. Um, so I might just go with that. Even though I think that's a bug in my configging. Um, oh, let me make sure the landing gear are placed right. Yep, there. Cool. Cool beans. All right. Um, yeah, so this thing is ready to rock. Um, only problem is we need to put a couple of these here. Oops. Oh, no, I guess we do actually want the 90 degrees. And we'll move them in a little bit. Yeah, okay. So, is that going to be enough pitch authority? Probably not. Um, That gives us a little more pitch authority. These are all set to hydrazine, I believe. Yeah, because that's what we got. Okay. All right. 16 tons, man. All right, I want to see if this thing will actually work. Um, so time to do a bit of hyper editing. Oops, they all need to be in the same stage.
I think I also want a bit more of this. A bit more yaw control too. Okay. Good thing Ferrum's not watching this or he'd probably have a heart attack because this probably is not going to be the best. But, um, yeah, those straight wings are bad news. Uh, it'd probably be just be delta like that. Um, oh yeah, let's see if we're actually stable. Uh, where is the center of pressure, anyway? Yes, yeah, so we're marginally aerodynamically stable. Let's check our hypersonic stability. Awesome! At Mach 10, we actually stabilize at that level of angle attack, which is just about right. That's cool, even before I do these funky things. Um, oh yeah, and these need to not... It's lower gear. These need to not steer. Okay. We're ready to rock. stick out. Why did the RCS go in that stage? That's weird. Let's see if we can manage to take off before the end of the runway. We do not have a high thrust to weight ratio, as you can see. Because <laughs> this is not a sea level engine. That that's good. That's good. All right. Whoa, we're that's interesting. I do not have the yaw stability I would like to have. That's for sure. We're not sufficiently stable <laughs> cuz this is swishing all the heck around. There. That may that deploying the speed brakes does at least make us stable. Good to know. As expected. It would be expected to make us stable. Alright, let's climb up to a saner altitude. Man, this thing is just not stable. Alright, let's make it slightly more stable by leaving mass in the forward tank as long as possible. I just wanted to see what the, the vectoring would do to that. Blowfish, yeah, the problem with Alex Delta is, or at least this time, is the center of mass is so close to, I mean, the center of mass is literally on the start of the vertical stabilizers.
Should I actually put two crew cans in? Because then you could sub it out for a single cargo bay, I think. bobbing and weaving like mad. Can't even have much of a climb rate either. Well, 100 meters per second is pretty decent climb rate. Yeah, this thing does need more tail. Not really sure why it wants to roll to the side, though. All right, we're entering the stratosphere. We're about to. Um, I actually, so I still have my starlight. I like my starlight. Um, my starlight flies really well but I wanted to make something visibly different. Starlight is, looks like a scaled down uh, Von Braun 1952 shuttle, but with a cylindrical fuselage instead of a conic one. Yeah, I kind of don't trust SAS, actually. Let's just go ahead and uh, trim it out and see what happens if I can get by without SAS. Okay. One tick of left roll trim. Wait. All right, now we're thoroughly supersonic. Only two minutes burn left, but we still have a kilometer per second of delta V. That's fairly good. Yeah, there's not a lot of roll stability on this thing because of the comparatively small tail surfaces. Although one white might think they would be enough tail surface. The other issue is that I don't have anything... Tra um. Oh yeah, right. I used to have Pilot Assist installed. Um, but then I stopped making space planes, so I uninstalled it. Um, but I should install it again. F if I'm actually going to seriously contemplate doing space planes in this campaign. I kind of just want to do a space plane because I was bored of always doing the Mark 1 as the first thing in orbit. Because the Mark 1 gets pretty boring. I thought Advanced Fly-By-Wire was just a better way of... Isn't, wasn't that what... Um, oh, jeez. What's his name? Bill, didn't you take that over, though, or recompile it for Linux or something? Okay, now we're getting high enough that we need to reorient some. Come on. You can do it. That's good. Need to get into a zoom climb somehow. Oh yeah, and I need to turn on infinite propellant so that we actually can test this thing at high speed. Yeah, it was converting into SDL, that's right. Because it was by N... What's his name? N... Uh, he did a lot of the early CCAN stuff, then he went to Modded City Skylines. I can't remember his name. I think his first name, his actual first name was Alexander.
we're going to have to pitch up a lot. Oh, right. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> Forgot about that part. RCS time. End light, was it? No, end light's something else. Or was it end light? Bill, you'll remember. You'd think gimbal would be enough, but apparently gimbal is not enough. I guess again because we're so close to center of mass. Oh right, there's there's it's from the verniers. It's from the verniers, so there's yeah, it's um it's a Russian engine. See just how much we can do with less than 1.0 thrust weight ratio. Can we get to Mach 4? Yeah, it is Alexander. Yes. Zhuganov. Um, but yeah, I forget what his nick was. It was like N light or something on the forms. Let's increase our pitch a little bit. Wonder what our effective acceleration is, because it's like there's a lot of drag. There must be a crap ton of drag. Man, this feels like space planes in regular KSP a little bit, where you're clawing for speed and altitude. And even the velocity makes sense as we're approaching KSP orbital velocity. Let's try to not have so much drag. for this. Let's see how it re-enters.
So let's just verify that we can do what I think we can do. So, yes. Let's turn infinite propellant off. And let's orient for retrofire. fully deflect our elevons. This may take some time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, let's dump our kerosene and locks. Let's yeah, fifty k fifty kilometer parity is probably a fine entry angle for this. That's right, Mac Chip does have angular velocity. Awesome. Hey, Dyson. All right. Okay, let's see how this reentry works. I fear it will quickly become unstable. But we'll see. Uh, we want to do that. Actually, I think we want to do 35 degrees. And pop out the speed brakes, too. So that's set to deflection. Speed brakes will add drag, but also because they're above the center of mass, mostly kick us back a little bit extra, too. Yeah, because of the the limited roll stability, um, it is going to be well. The nice thing is just the mo the it's not going to have so much inertia because it's so much lighter. Um, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see. This thing isn't quite as thick as I wanted it to be. Dang. It's fairly well aligned, at least. Oh, shoot. Um, thermal. 
I want to know how this works. Because we desperately need to stay with a detached shockwave, that's for sure. Speed's still increasing. Our ballistic coefficient must be hilariously low. I think it's on the order of like 40 kilograms a square meter. At the moment. Because of the hypersonic non like greater than one CD. Well shy of what the Mercury missions counted as entry. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Fire's flight data will show it. That's how I know it was on the order of forty, because it was on the f order of forty last time. But if you want to see it, I can pull it up. Yep, bang on. Uh, we're probably going to want the dampers on, actually once we get down low enough that I have to fly it myself. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. By the time I got on to version C of this, this thing had like almost half again the wing area because this was before I realized that there was a thermal bug. Um, I thought I was just designing badly. <laughs> um, this thing had hilarious, hilariously low wing loading. Like ridiculous. Hmm. Five point three tons. That's actually pretty decent. Yeah, our wing loading is, I think, broadly on par with a, a Fox Wolf one ninety. I looked that up at one point because I think um, our actual wing loading in terms of kg per square meter of actual wing area is on the order of 180 kilograms, I think. Or was it 80? I forget. I think it might be 80. 180 is like what the shuttle had, I think. Um, No? Yeah, it was 180 then. Okay. Yeah, not 80. 80 is, like I guess, like a sailplane. Alright. Already in the megajoule range for heat loading. 0.12 watts per square centimeter.
still only halfway to interface. And this is with a much lower BC than Mercury. Texas? Oh, no, we're down. We're in the southern hemisphere. We're over the Indies. That's what's going on. We'll send this. Sync rate's still increasing. Going to be a little while before we can get enough air to decrease our sync rate. Wow, look at that. Some mountains poking through the clouds. Yeah, we're clearly going to have to ditch in the Atlantic. But that's fine. I hate landing anyway. I'd rather ditch. Don't have to worry about the wheels. start the CO2 scrubber. Oh well. Um, Alright, now our sync rate is... oh, nope, nope, still increasing. Drag coefficient's going down. Hot I no. Wait. Wait, G thirty five. What the heck is remind me again what the G thirty let's see. They have so many G things. Um No, no I'm not. Uh I'm using the The, the wireless version of that, it looks like. I forget what number they are. The, um, the G930s, that's what they are. G930. Isn't like the G933 the new one? Yeah, I'm not using the new one. I'm using the old one. Just past the Carmen line. 
0.03 G's. Why are you wondering? Was it something about the sound quality or? Oh, I still have that thruster there and it does a fat lot of nothing because it's shielded. Should get rid of them. Darn tootin' right, there's large AOA. 34.91 degrees of it. Heat load is mounting, but skin temp is not that bad yet. Uh, the thermal bug was that, and it's probably my fault for changing something in 1.2 in terms of thermo, um, that, okay, that's a bit worrying, the rate at which we're going to be using hydrazine for this. Um, Just go with 40 on these puppies. Um, so the, the thermal bug was that due to something that I must have changed in 1.2, um, I assume it's my fault, um, re-entries were about one and a half times as hot as they should have been. Which, for obvious reasons, cause problems. Hey, Duo. Not really sure why. Oh, yeah, because we have some right roll. Let's recenter. All right, that's better. How we doing? Wow, we're down to about half our hydrazine. That's not awesome. All right, let's go down to 30 degrees. Well, let's go down to 25 degrees. Hopefully, we can mostly do that on aerodynamics now. Nope. Survey says. Oh God. <laughs> that's going to lead to an attached shockwave, and that would have been very bad. All right, let's... Uh, it looks like we're getting an attached shockwave anyway. Yeah, temp's climbing really disturbingly near max operational temp. Do we have enough hydrazine? We'll see. I really should not have nosed down like that. That was... St 
stupid. That was so stupid. Let's try pitching up a little bit more. That's going to increase our hydrazine burn rate. We don't have that much left. Uh, not, a, not an attack shockwave, an attached one. Sorry, I wasn't clear. There's attached and detached shockwaves. Um, when basically you're pushing a pointy thing against the air, um, that will lead to, and you're at a lower Mach number, that will lead to, lead to an attached shockwave, where the shockwave is literally like right close to the, the nose of that. Um, when you have a blunt nose, or sometimes even when you're at high Mach, even with a sharp nose, you'll get a detached shock, where there's a bow shock that's um, out here, so it's not directly near the thing. Uh, you're in a cooler area of the air, so you're going to be okay. Hey, the temperature's going down. Or, oops, it was. For a minute. Uh, we're getting perilously close to no more hydrazine. Guess I better pack more hydrazine. Um, temperatures. Yeah, you know what? Just to see how things go, I'm going to go ahead and not worry about how much hydrazine we have. Probably going to need about half again the hydrazine we brought. How are we doing here? 1426? Hey, it leveled. Oh, it, yep, it leveled out. So we're redlining stuff, but. And look, we're leveling off, too. Awesome! So we need about half again the hydrazine we brought. Because we were getting quite low on hydrazine before I turned on infinite hydrazine. Because, yeah, we don't have enough air to actually have enough torque from the air, so we have to do it mostly with RCS. Bill, I don't think there's enough air for it to do that. Um, there's just not enough air up here for that to really matter that much. Yeah, as expected, Q would be decreasing um, because we've leveled off, but we're slowing down. See, now we're actually climbing slightly. So let's come down to 20 degrees. Hopefully that's not going to... Yeah, that's, that's cooling off quite rapidly. Yeah, let's keep dynamic pressure about where it's... Yep. Excellent. Yeah. I think when I rebuilt this... Um, I had them out to about here. Oh, I should see if I can find Starlight, because I was really happy with Starlight. Starlight was the best space plane ever made. It's kind of the only space plane that worked for a while. And it used only these parts with X15 level thermal shielding. Alright, temperature's increasing again because we're going down pretty rapidly again, so let's pitch up again. Downrange distance is great. <laughs> We're like flying over half the world. Temperature is decreasing again. Oh, we're up to one kilopascal. All right, we're going to bounce up again. So yeah, this re-entry was successful. I mean, I need to up the hydrazine, but otherwise it was successful.
Yep, working fine. Man, the wing got hot. Uh, is Bang 991? Yes, I'm... <laughs> I'm not just the creator of a realism mod, I'm the creator of a large number of realism mods. Um, so yeah. Yeah, we're staying up nice and high so we can re-radiate all this heat. Yay, we're cooling off. Yes, and remember this is with yeah, this was with broadly X15 rated stuff. Um. But had I had the wing loading in an X16, it would not have gone well. <laughs> it would not have gone well at all. Oh, apparently the engine's heating up. Even though it should, hopefully it's not getting any, it's not getting any convective flux, but I guess it's heating up because of the conductance, which is not great. Alright, let's start descending a bit more rapidly so we don't bake. Because I don't want that engine to blow. And it was it's getting a little bit close, because look at how close we are to that. Still going Mach 15, and that nose is going to get a little bit hot, but I think we'll be okay. Hey, for once we're getting a bit of some flames. Alright, I guess we better pull up again. hot are we getting? 465. We're okay. Now at least we're getting some serious deceleration. If not for that engine heating up, we could have stayed up there for a long time. All right. Let's come down again.
yes, S turns would be rather better, but I'm kind of afraid to, because the problem is to get into an S turn, I'm going to have to roll, and I'm going to have to do a, would have to really closely couple yaw and roll, and I don't quite feel comfortable doing that. I mean, let's see. Well, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's a skittish proposition. As I said, I was a bit scared of doing that. But it's all right. I can hack it. I think we are actually low enough we can turn off RCS now. Yep, we're good. All right, now let's come back out again. Yeah, this is actually flying pretty nice up here. Broadly speaking. Whoop, let's damp that out. Oh, I never turn on FAR's dampers, but that's fine. SAS is damping it enough for me. All right, and now let's roll this way with yaw coupling but yeah keeping aligned right man this feels like rolling an Apollo capsule I mean, it's the same deal basically yeah or without reducing the lift but yeah more precisely without reducing the um, the frontal area so without reducing the drag. Um, and maintaining the same angle of attack, which is also important for in the same basically the same thing as keeping the drag what it is so that we continue to have a detached bow shock. Whoop. Nope. Come back. That's better. Okay. All right. I rate this plane re-entry certified once I increase the hydrazine in capacity. It actually flies much more... St with gentle movements, it's actually flying pretty well right now. Stamp that. Okay. Uh, the danger of an attached shockwave is much, much, much increased rate of heating and also the fact that the temperature of the air outside you is going to be hotter because you're not in the post-shock zone. You're in the shock, if I understand correctly. Um, when I wrote that code for KSP, it takes a lot of liberties, but it broadly coheres with reality. So, All right, I think we can finally go ahead and bring these back down. And yeah. Yep. Now we can just tootle along. Let's increase our sync rate quite a bit. Uh, this is all without RCS, I'll point out. This is all on aerodynamic controls only. Okay, and now we can go back to the S curves. 5 G's of deceleration, that's pretty good. That's dumping the speed really fast. All right, and let's go the other way. Eight Gs. All right, now we're under Mach 4. That's pretty good. Yeah, Bill's right, I'm ditching. Totally ditching. All right. I'm 
It's a pretty cute space plane as space planes go. Alright, I think we can retract the speed brakes now. And we'll just come in at Mach 2. So we're still 15 kilometers up. And that engine should be cooling off now. I mostly just didn't want it to pop. Whoa, that's getting a little jittery. Let's turn on our dampers. Actually, I'm not going to turn on the roll, roll because that'll try to keep us level. And I just want to damp things. Still want to be able to roll as needed. That engine got perilously close. And it is now slowly cooling off. It's because it, it still has some conductive flux. Because everything around it is hot still. All right, Mach one point. What is that? One point two, coming up on one point two. All right, let's look inside. Only five kilometers up. Get through the cloud bank. Three kilometers. Yeah, we're ditching in the South Atlantic. There we are. Now we're under the, eh, mostly under the cloud bank. All right. What's our lift to drag ratio? Five. Five with a bit of angle of attack. We can get up to 10 with some serious angle of attack, but we're still going too fast to actually produce that angle of attack. Alright. Dial in a little trim. Okay. Um, KSP parts have conducted heat since they literally introduced temperature. It's just in the thermo overhaul on 1.0, it's become more relevant. Um, if anybody has been playing KSP long enough to remember how uh, if you put a mainsail behind an orange tank, it would explode, and that's why you had to put a little pancake tank in front of it, that was because of the bugs in conductivity in old KSP. And then I rewrote all the thermo code for 1.0. Yeah, now we don't have so much roll stability, so I gotta put SAS back on. <laughs> yeah, our ballistic coefficient is super high because our angle of attack is so low. Because our CD is pretty low. So we got to slow down. So more more S curves. This may take some time. Plonk. All right. Probably feel more comfortable if this were in miles per hour, but yeah, I haven't actually done a drop test with this yet, so I don't actually know how it flies slow. Because remember, we just warped into orbit. We didn't actually bother testing it in that situation. And we certainly can't ditch at 200, at, at like what, 180 knots this is. Alright, 
Let's try getting slow and see how it works. We're still at like 1,500, what? 16, 1,700 feet. why it wants to roll right. It's weird. Let's pop some speed brakes. That'll slow us down some. Why are we getting side slip from having the brakes out? That's weird. Alright, that's non-trivial alpha. It's like 8 degrees. Yeah, our wing loading is higher than Starlight's. So hopefully we'll still be able to ditch okay. I don't know. We might need to do a runway landing, which would be annoying, because I don't want to. I mean, I could also just pack a parachute, I guess. Alright. Let's trundle along at this 110 knots that's not bad we can ditch it 110 70 meters let's level out a little bit 40 all right 20 all right let's do this flare Well, that was an interesting bug. We just got accelerated to a kilometer per second from doing that. That was weird. But okay. So yeah, we blew apart and we somehow got accelerated to a kilometer per second. That was distressing. Um, but we verified that the reentry worked fine, so that's cool. So now, the design lessons from that. Get rid of this, because I forgot I even had it. Um, make these longer. These actually need to be slightly longer still. There. And that should have also made us slightly more stable. Yep. Um, yep, it did. Okay, cool. Now... That shifted our dry center of mass back, however, which is not the best. No volume available. Yeah, no, I'm going to add the extra hydrazine. I just want to, um, what could we do? Guess we can add a little more propellant back there. Does that recenter things? Not quite. That's centered. Now we need to check 
one point six four. Um, how much else can we stick in here? Ugh, we have zero liters left. That's annoying. All right. Well, we're gonna take all this crap out. and put rather more hydrazine in there. And let's put a bit more hydrazine in here. Alright, so that's gonna disturb um, let's see, do these need to go up or down? Down apparently. Um, does that look about right? I think so. Um, sixty six. O2 That'll do, even though there's that ridge there. I'm somewhat loath to fix it because we have such perfection there. All right. Um I think we might have a slight downward slant on the runway, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so we're good. This thing is ready to rock. Might shift, uh, might actually take some of this battery out and shift things forward slightly. There, that looks just about right. The other, th because basically with the with these out, it'll definitely be okay in terms of yaw stability during re-entry. It's just subsonic. It does not have much roll stability. Um, yeah. That doesn't really change much of anything. Uh, does it? Yeah, it goes up to almost 0.1 kilonewton meters. Oh well. We don't really have anywhere else we c oh we could put the hydrazine in that, couldn't we? Um, so there's one hundred and fifty liters of it. Let's see what happens if we stick it in here. That will shift our center of mass back slightly. Hydrazine, where where far are there hydrazine? Alright, hundred and fifty liters. Okay. Now we can shift these down so that it aligns better. And this we've got to shift down slightly too. Shift this down. That actually looks about centered right where it is. But, so we've got to shift this down a little bit more then. Nope, that made it worse. 
That made it better. Bingo. Looky that. All right, so thickness needs to go up slightly. Oh, ugh, no, that's ugly. Alright, so there's a noticeable ridge there, but can't be helped because I'm too enamored of that no torque. So we're not going to do anything with that. Uh, okay. Um... Bill, it's, yeah, a center fin would help subsonic, but we're basically okay. And I don't want to mess with that now that I've got it perfect, so. Do I really want to know what the the wave drag is for this, I guess it would be sort of funny to find out. Transonic design. Critical Mach number, 0.64. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, 0.58 square meters. Yeah. Yep, as expected right here. That's where the big kink is. And um, that's interesting. Why is there a kink? Oh, because of cause this starting? Right, this starting, so there's more area, and then these stop, where, so it goes to... Right, okay. And then the spike at the rear is horrific. Um, but then again, drag is our friend for re-entry, so I don't think I want to actually do anything to lower the wave dragger. Um, although they would be hot spots, presumably. Um, let's see what that changed about our stability. Yes, now we're actually fairly stable. Um, yes, but transonic, it's hypersonic work, not. Although our stability point is further back now. And at 20. Alright, there we have a zone of. Alright, that's fine. Who cares? Um, we're pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, that's cool. Um, I have a space plane to use on top of my rockets. Uh, and happily, they have enough thrust that we can probably lift this thing. Uh, stability is... Let's go back to point two. This yellow line, if it's sloping down, you're stable. That's the TLDR. Oh, why are these things like that? That's stupid. There. Fixed. Okay. Okay. Now I kind of want to see. Do I have a copy of this launch vehicle? Oh geez, it's 1220. Um... Uh... Russia. Um... And it's the... 
What did we even call it anyway? Ships. Um. Curlew. That's right. So let's load our thingy. Let's retract the landing gear. Heck is oh, it's down here. Way up. All right. Now let's put it on top. So we need to shave about 150 off that. So that we can actually deorbit. Where's the curl? Oh, I scrolled past it, didn't I? Huh? Where'd it go? That's the Oh, I stuck it in just saves, didn't I? Yeah, that was stupid. VAB. All right, let's try this again. Yeah, Bill, I'm not gonna side mount it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the 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 Titan one thing with the huge fins. Why is it still not here? I literally just copied and pasted it in, so why is it not here? That's super weird. Oh. Ah uh, ha ha. I stuck it in <laughs> I stuck it in the wrong sandbox. This was the one point one point three version. That would explain things. Okay. Now it's here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Wonder if we have enough delta V or if I need to upgrade the engines. One point two five. Okay. Survey says we have enough delta V. That's excellent news. Uh, we have enough delta V to get into like a ridiculously high orbit, actually. Because remember. <laughs> We, Mechjab doesn't count that, so it's actually going to be more like that kind of delta V. So we have like a kilometer per second more delta V than we need. It's pretty impressive. Um, we haven't added the fins yet, though. Um, These need to be supersonic, I think. So let's save as default and replace them with supersonics. Let's 
Okay. And now let's make them really, really, really big. We also have to add a set here because we'll be separating at fairly low altitude. So let's survey the damage. All right, Far, what do you think of this thing? Well, it's more stable than some rockets I've launched, so that's probably going to be fine. And what's our delta V down to? Hmm, still fine. Uh, Chicken Swag, the nice thing about it being a video is you can literally go back and watch what I did. Alright. This is, this is very much looking like a Soviet dinosaur just much lower wing loading because I'm not insane and I don't want to cool it with liquid hydrogen. And we have to... Oh, no, we don't actually have to hot stage it because we can ullage slightly with RCS. Blowfish, yeah, yeah, they don't, which is why I am pleased at the fairly low curve. Uh, that curve is nowhere near as high as some of the, like, basically Thor Gina launches I've flown. I mean, let's, let's see it in practice, and then i got to go to bed. I'm not going to actually fly the whole mission, but I do want to see how it does its ascent. Um, Liftoff thrust weight ratio is still 1.3, so we're still fine. Um, might actually extend these outward a little bit more. Man, this is starting to look a lot like Von Braun 1948, well, 1952. Starting to look a lot like it. For obvious reasons. Um, for obvious reasons. Okay. Bill, thank you. Yeah, I need to remember to do that. Oh, the clamps are now in the wrong stage. Let's fix that. Booster SEP. SEP. Uh, SEP and RCS. And then ignition. All right. Yeah, Blowfish, those are the real engines, engines, not the SSTU ones. Um, but yes, it does have mounts, but sadly, it's only the, the weird modern orange one, which I don't like. That's the only actual Russian-looking mount. The rest are weird, like, yeah, basically American-looking. Um, all right, let's figure out what... what kind of ascent path we want to take. I think this is probably going to be about right, particularly given how long that's going to take to burn, and that we want to launch to a decent orbit. And we have plenty of delta V, so we can afford to do that kind of profile. So let's see how this goes. And full thrust. Hopefully we'll have enough control authority. And dampers off.
Blowfish. Ah, I will have to look because I have the I have the last release of SSTU for 1.2. Um, Bill, yep, got him. And they didn't seem to. They had they had recoloring options for tanks, but not for the boat tail that I could see. All right. So we'll have to go to 1.3 at some point, although hopefully not until after they make config node loading faster, because that will really screw us over a lot. I don't even want to think about how long an RO load will be in 1.3. Uh, you know what? We should actually do the shuttle style. Um, Yes, indeed. Yes, we should. We don't have... Oh, that's what would blow our Delta V. We don't have an abort system. <laughs> shuttle! Yay, shuttle! Uh, convention under King, because every time you parse a config node, it, run, it sends it off to localization to check the string. And the number of times we do get value is or well, the number of times module manager does get value because of the number of patches we have is quite insane. So yeah, Blowfish got it because of the localization. Um hmm. our pitch rate's a little fast. wonder why we got off track. Well, it'll be okay. This is definitely a different way to do orbit. Wait, what's... Oh, jeez. Ha! Huh? I forgot to turn unlimited fuel off. That's unlimited propellant off. That's why it was doing that. Yes, you might think it would make sense to actually not localize little, literally every string, including the ones that are numbers, but yeah. Why are those clamps shaking? That's kind of weird. Okay, this ascent should run better. All right, roll program is going to put us inverted, as is proper. Wow, we have shockingly little control authority. The yeah, when your engines don't gimbal and you only have verniers, it's a problem. Bill, um, because it means that so for shuttle, it's for the abort. Uh, in our case, it would probably be for the G's on a board, so that you'd be sitting properly rather than having negative G's on a board. Uh, for for those of you watching this on YouTube and who can't see the chat, Blowfish just put scare quotes around shuttle and abort. <sighs> yeah, I really should rig up some abort system for this. We do have almost a kilometer per second delta V to play with, which means it's actually more than that because we're not touching the delta V on the upper. 
So we could get away with a good like ton or so of abort. Yeah. Yeah, shuttle shuttle boards are darkly comic at best. Uh, and Columbia too, but Columbia was not a problem with the abort system. Columbia was a problem with um, foam separation damaging the thermal tiles. Challenger was straight up because they didn't have an abort system. Alright, so we're keeping pretty stable, to be honest, with this amount of fin. Looks like something out of Robotech, actually, like a Zendredi ship. Very definite anime look. Sorry, Macross, I guess, not Robotech. About six seconds to separation. And sep, and we get a nice curl of cross. Oh, look at it, so pretty. Um, let's pitch up to prograde. So, say what you will, Robotech had great music. Whoop. That was funny. <laughs> Need to pitch up a bit more. I need to get an updated mu file for this thing so that the verniers work properly. Oh, also why are throughout the ascent those I don't know why those brakes default to on. Oh, I think because Brian defaulted ever defaulted the brakes to on. That's probably why. Whoa, I just huh, just looked at our orbital velocity. It's horrifically low.
Yeah, shuttle. Shuttle was really kind of a death trap, and it's kind of amazing that it claimed as few lives as it did. This is better. Let's come level. RCS to on. Alright, I guess I pitched up kind of too much before. But that's okay. Still going to be like four more minutes to orbit. All right, now we can roll level. Oh, they, they, oh, I must have them set in stage. It's not, it's not that brakes start on, it's that they're set to actuate on staging. Why do we not have... Get level. Um, Bill, pretty sure that would cause hotspots. Gravity losses aren't anywhere near as bad as I thought they'd be. I 
I mean, the shuttle's Achilles heel was that it was like 80 tons of dry mass around a payload. And engines that had to be more or less rebuilt after every flight, so you didn't even save anything from that. Okay, and we're going to insert 265 by 265, more or less. finish on the verniers. Close enough. All right. So that took 9177 meters per second to reach orbit, to reach a fairly high orbit. That's pretty impressive. Um, and we took, so effectively this can place two tons into orbit, two tons of payload, or one ton of payload and actually have an abort system. Convention under King, which is to say not many know what it was. I think that's about time to call it quits for the night. Um, we've got plenty of hydrazine now. We've got rather larger control surfaces. So yeah, I think we're good. their stage. Why did I put them there rather than brakes? Who knows? Um, what was the other thing I was going to fix on this? There was something else I was going to fix on this. Um, an abort system. Right.
heavy is that anyway? 20 kilos? Well, I don't even care. Um, uh, sip motor. Sip motor. We're gonna need we're gonna need a bigger set motor. Sixteen point seven nine. Where's the large? Four tons. At least that gives us an actual abort. on a board Come on. decouple and these become this has to be a fairing side um, conic this. This goes up here and these go up here because we'll never actually fire them unless we have to abort. Jettison and turn off the engine. Well, actually we don't have to turn off the engines because um, we'll power away from them. This thing is not going to be necessarily stable with that much bass at the back, no. Um, but it doesn't have to be stable for more than a second and a half. <laughs> so I think we'll be okay. Um. Is that high enough? That's probably good enough. Come on. That's good. All right. So, yeah. Um we still got ridiculous quantities of delta V so we could still take a ton into orbit maybe a ton and a half certainly we could take an extra Kerbal uh, also is there that bug here although it didn't affect delta V yeah okay 
So yeah, at the very least we can take a Kerbal into orbit. I should redesign this with two cans and a um, replaceable cargo bay too. Um, yeah, you know what, I, I want to see how this abort works. Let's see if we pitch wildly. Also, we can't really do a... I wonder if we could do a tower abort. Um, we probably need ejection seats if we were doing an abort from the pad. But let's see what this looks like. Oh, actually, it's survivable. That's awesome. That's really quite awesome. Did not expect that, but that's awesome. Okay, we officially survived our pad abort. And we're flying despite massing over 12 tons. Let's see what's left of the LV. OG's water tower. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Alright. This thing actually flies not incredibly badly. Which is really kind of unexpected. Let's be honest. Alright, let's put the dampers on and... Yep. Working pretty well. All right, I'm going to claw for a little bit of altitude and then try to land. Okay. And I'm not so stupid as to try to land on the runway. Um, well, why not? Why not, right? Yeah, Blowfish, you're right that a max Q abort would be problematic. Um, we might... <laughs> who even knows? Um, but we kept our stability fairly well. I don't think it made us that... Because it's 16 tons, so 2 tons at the rear is not going to make that big a difference. Let's hope we're aligned fairly well now. Getting there. All right. Gear down. Gear locked. Oh, that's a bit of sway. Okay. Runway aligned, but we're high and fast. Speed break time. Let's line up slightly better here. Just 
still about 220. Yeah, I would kind of like to know what my speed is in knots right now. Man, look at that seam. Let's try to land it a little under 100 if we can. Yeah, we're going to overshoot, probably. That's tragic. Alright, come on. Get back level here. Oh, I've been playing long enough that I guess the GC is getting bad. Alright. Brakes, and there. That actually worked quite well. That landed quite well, other than the little bit of sway there, here and there. So that's a successful design. And we even have an abort system for it. So cool. The Glorious Space Program has a Glorious Space Shuttle. Okay. So thanks everybody for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.